Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. If you are seeing the white stuff, you are not imagining things. Snowflakes falling for the first time this season in parts of Metro Detroit. We'll tell you how long that's going to last. Hank? Stopping crime and catching criminals in the act. Take a look. Help me, Hank, obtaining the surveillance video capturing these thieves on the move. We're going to show you the new crime prevention tools being used to stop this activity in the heart of downtown Detroit. And Charles Pugh's fall from grace is now complete. The ex-city council president admits in court that behind a carefully crafted facade, he was indeed a sexual predator. Former Fox 2 anchor and city council president Charles Pugh will avoid a life sentence after pleading guilty to a lesser offense. But he did plead guilty to two counts of third degree criminal sexual conduct today in court. As part of that plea deal, that means Pugh will spend five and a half to 15 years in prison. He will have to register as a sex offender and he'll have to do that in fact for the rest of his life. He will not be allowed any contact with minors. Guy Gordon was there for the proceedings today. He's with us live now and now Guy the victim is speaking out. Yes, he is. And with our permission, we can reveal his identity, Devin and Kimberly. His 28 year old Austin Williams. He is the young man now 28 years old that brought the original complaint saying that at the age of 14, he sought a mentorship with Charles Pugh and that it ended with him being victimized by a man who is now admitted to being a sexual predator. Now, he is in no way dissatisfied with his plea agreement. He says this was never about prison time for Charles Pugh. As far as he was concerned, he just wanted Pugh to admit the truth. And that's what Pew did today in open court. He was matter of fact, no hesitation. Did you engage in sexual penetration on at least two occasions with Mr. Williams? Yes. The hope of hearing that admission is what drove Austin Williams to relive the pain he experienced when his mentor Charles Pugh had sex with him. Williams says he embarked on this painful journey to prevent the victimization of others. Knowing that he was in a different place and there were so many other vulnerable young men, young gay men, um, this wasn't something that I felt comfortable that allowing to continue to, to, to happen. In the sentence agreement. Barring the unexpected, Pew will get five and a half to 15 years in prison. Three first degree charges were dropped in exchange for the guilty plea. He avoids life in prison, but Williams is satisfied he faces a lifetime of shame. The shame that he put on myself, on the countless other young men who, who have dealt with him, um, he now has to feel that for the rest of his life, and that, that's going to be justice. As Pew heads to at least five years behind four walls, William says he built high walls in his youth because of Pew's betrayal. Growing up, it affected the way that I perceived adults. It affected my, my relationships uh, personally. It affected um, people who I look to as mentors. Um, it held up a brick wall. And he says that now because of the, the avoidance of a trial, there are other young men who will not be forced to testify. Also, his mother will not be forced to hear more testimony about some of these uh, sordid encounters with Charles Pugh. And he says that is just fine with him. He did not want to force them to go through that. Uh, he, uh, Charles Pugh does avoid a lifetime prison term. He could be eligible for parole, as you say, as early as five and a half years. Coming up at six, uh, we're going to talk further with the victim, but we're also going to talk to colleagues, community members about the cost of Charles Pugh's actions, what was lost because of this scandal. We're live from Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. Back to you. Uh, Guy, we heard Austin Williams talking about how it affected him growing up. Uh, did he talk about how he's doing now? You know, he is doing surprisingly well. He is employed. He says he has a job. He's still living here in Michigan. He said he did get some therapy, but it was really more through his own spiritual determination that he was able, yeah. over to, able to overcome those walls uh, that he was speaking about. All right, guys, so more coming up at 6 o'clock. And right now on ClickOnDetroit.com, we've created a photo gallery spotlighting the rise and fall of Charles Pugh. You can find the link on our homepage.
Well, let's take a look at a rather gloomy picture from our Windsor Sky Cam tonight. The rain uh, started falling early this afternoon with a chill packed into a it. A definite chill out there. Let's get uh, over to Ben right now. We're okay with the rain, but some people are seeing snowflakes. <laughs> I saw some sleet this morning too, yeah. Ben. Yeah, it's a mixed bag out there, especially when you get north of Detroit. Right here on the riverfront, we're seeing all rain, but you can see that huge little swath of blue probably overdoing it a little bit here on four live radar, but there are definitely snowflakes mixed in. Lapeer at the top of the hour reporting light snow. We've seen it off and on in Pontiac, Waterford, and uh, pretty much on either side of 69 is where we're focused on seeing some of those flakes. But in our south zone and our metro zone, it is rain. There's less moisture here right now, but we're still getting wet in spots, so it's going to be a slow commute in a lot of locations, especially in those areas where there are flakes flying. A couple more of those still by 6, 8 o'clock and then we should be all liquid after sunset tonight. Temperatures steady and even rising in some cases. We'll look at what's to come as far as the rain in just a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben, thank you. We do have some breaking news to pass along to you from overseas. Two strong earthquakes have hit central Italy just two hours apart, shaking buildings in Rome. The 6.0 and 5.4 magnitude earthquakes hit not far from the site of the devastating quake that hit, you might remember, back in August. So far, there have been no reports of injuries. We'll, of course, have any new developments during this newscast and on our website at clickondetroit.com. Now to brand new information we are learning tonight in this ever growing corruption investigation in Macomb County. So far, two government officials have been charged. Macomb Township Trustee Clifford Freitas and Clinton Township Trustee Dean Reynolds. And we're learning about a checkered past for one of them. Rod Maloney live tonight in Macomb Township with the latest Rod. Well, Devin, I'll tell you, this is really rocking at least two communities and perhaps the entire county as people are waiting for the other shoe to drop. But as you start digging into things, you find more and more about what might have led to this case in the first place. A silent Macomb Township trustee Cliff Friedas ducked into a car outside federal court yesterday. The Rizzo environmental employee, an Air Force veteran, is charged with taking $7,500 in bribes to deliver Rizzo the contract, but allegedly demanded $35,000 after the approval. It prompted Township Supervisor Janet Dunn to put out a statement, quote, I am personally shocked and deeply saddened to hear of these allegations. We simply have no information. I would like to emphasize that this office condemns any and all actions by public officials that betray the public trust, end quote. Clinton Township trustee Dean Reynolds is charged with taking nearly $100,000 in bribes for his votes on various contracts. Reynolds' opponent for Township Supervisor, incumbent Robert Cannon, said of Reynolds by phone, By all accounts, Reynolds is cash strapped. Going through a fourth divorce, the federal complaint shows he's on wiretaps saying that he wanted Rizzo to pay for his divorce lawyer. In 2009, the Palace of Auburn Hills sued Reynolds nearly $300,000 for not paying for a suite his company rented. They later settled. Reynolds also filed for Chapter 7 personal bankruptcy in 2014. He decided he probably needed a job, and if he was able to extort money as a trustee in a part-time position, imagine what he could do in a full-time position. Now, there are other court cases where he has creditors chasing him. In the meantime, we found this. It's a police report dating back, well, 15 years, back to 2001. But he had allegedly put a gun a Smith & Wesson 38 on the car in a holster and then drove off. The gun went into a gutter. Somebody found it and the police put out the report saying that it was reckless use of a firearm. And there is much more. We'll continue digging. Reporting live in Macomb Township, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Okay, Rod, well, this just in from downtown Detroit. Dan Gilbert has announced a $15 million donation to Michigan State University. The donation will go toward renovations at the Breslin Center and to support the Detroit Scholars Program. Gilbert, a Michigan State grad, made the announcement alongside Michigan State head men's basketball coach Tom Izzo. Decision 2016, Tim Kaine will be in Metro Detroit on Sunday to campaign for his running mate, Hillary Clinton, as well as getting out to encourage people to vote. Meantime, Donald Trump spent the morning in his swanky new hotel on Pennsylvania Avenue in D.C. In fact, it's just two blocks from where he'd like to live at the White House. Steve Handelsman has more on what Trump has to say about how he would transform America as president. Steve? 
Devin, thanks. This was a decaying post office here on Pennsylvania Avenue, not far from the White House. Now it's a glitzy hotel. Donald Trump coming here today to dedicate it was not a break from his campaign. Instead, it's part of his campaign. Off the campaign trail, but on TV, Donald Trump opened his new hotel in Washington. One, two, three. Five stars claimed the Trumps with a five-word message. Under budget and ahead of schedule. The hotel is a symbol, Trump claims. A major revenue producer and job creator. This is what I want to do for our country. Outside were protesters. Taking a shot at Trump from Florida was Hillary Clinton. He relied on undocumented workers to make his project cheaper. And most of the products in the rooms were made overseas. Vote today, she urged Floridians. Please, you can go early vote through Sunday, November 6. So far, with 1.6 million Floridians having voted, who is balloting is equally split by party affiliation. But Republicans claim an advantage nationally. Republican turnout in each of these key battleground states is way up from where it was in 2012. Clinton is weighed down by daily WikiLeaks, unverified by NBC News. A late batch revealing her campaign scrambling last year when President Obama said he learned of her private server on the news. We need to clean this up, said a top staffer. The president has emails from her. Back at his hotel, Donald Trump lingered before heading to North Carolina, a battleground where many more Democrats are early voting than Republicans are. Staffers say Trump's event here today carried live on cable, plus his obvious accomplishment here in the nation's capital. We'll do more now to helping with voters than another couple of big rallies might. From Washington, Steve Handelsman, Local 4. Okay, Steve, also today in an interview, Trump said he plans to dig into his own pockets for a big ad blitz ahead of Election Day. It is a relatively simple gesture that is giving some deserving women a fresh start. For them to give back like this and be able to get your hair done for free, your nails, makeup and everything, and then for me to have an interview at the last minute and this comes up is really great. How about that? How a fresh look is helping them get back on their feet. Also, do you recognize this man? How these grainy photos are playing a key role after a precious item was stolen from a Metro Detroit mall. Hank. It's a crime prevention partnership working to keep cars and people safe right here in the heart of downtown Detroit, and it is working in a big way. I'm Hank Winchester. We'll take you inside the operation coming up right after the break. Tonight. New at 6. An officer who made headlines as a hero is in trouble with the law. New at 6, how a state trooper allegedly stole about $170,000. Also, new reports as the most overworked police officers in America are right here in Michigan. At 6, why one local sergeant says that comes as no surprise to him. They took the bait. Thieves caught in the act breaking into cars in the heart of downtown Detroit. Well, tonight we take you inside the crime fighting operation that's working to keep you safer. Bait cars and bikes are helping to catch some big time criminals. In fact, two recent arrests led police to break up larger criminal rings. Yeah. Now our Hank Winchester shows us how DTE, DPD and Wayne State Police are all working together to try to make the city safer. Because of this crime partnership, there's been a dramatic decrease in the number of vehicle thefts and break-ins in downtown Detroit. And now this crime prevention effort stretching north of Midtown. Hidden cameras in this bait car catch a thief right in the act. These surveillance cameras capture these guys getting out of a car police were looking for. They're acting suspicious, scoping out vehicles, and soon police make their move. What these criminals don't know is they're being watched. Cameras mounted across the city and placed in bait cars watching their every move. Over the past two years, a dramatic reduction in uh, property crime. Michael Lynch, director of security at DTE, letting our cameras inside the nerve center, the security headquarters. It's here where the pros track movement all over the city. Their work recently leading to two major arrests that brought down two crime rings. Thankfully, we're able to stop them, and crime in the, in the downtown area has been reduced by 25% immediately. The bait car and bike program rolled out by DTE involved partnerships with DPD and Wayne State Police. Here's Chief Anthony Holt. 
I have over 800 cameras on campus. If you look up, I can pretty much see you. The DTE team may spot a thief near Wayne State, call their department, and together they close in. That partnership is key. No one department today, I believe, have the resources to do it by itself. Bait cars, bikes, cameras, and a partnership. It's a plan that's working and growing in Detroit. Other cities are taking notice of this crime prevention program, and they are now working to launch similar programs like this one across the country. The goal across the board, to reduce crime, to keep you safe. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Back to you. All right, Hank, and in fact, Detroit police tell us, yes, all of these additional cameras and resources, as you might expect, are helping the greater mission to fight crime in the city. I know that music. Yay. A big announcement today from the parade <laughs> company as a very familiar face will be the co-grand marshal for this year's big parade. This is fantastic news. Comedian and Detroit native Keegan-Michael Key will be one of the grand marshals for the parade on November 24th, joining an already star-studded cast. And he will be joining uh, Judge Damon Keith as the heel. Judge Keith will be the other Grand Marshal, so they'll be the partners this year. Olympic gymnast Ali Raisman, uh, pop artist Mike Posner going to be in the parade as well. we got a lot going on. Flo Rida is coming in for uh, Hop Nobble Gobble this year. It's going to yeah. be a big week in the city, huh? I'm, I'm excited for Hop. I think that's, that's going to be, be pretty fun. Very, yeah, yeah, really good. fun. And we uh, seem to be getting a jump on that kind of weather today. Yeah. <laughs> the, you uh, said it would. Moving in, yes. And, and you know what? You said I probably jinxed us when I was over at the parade company last <laughs> yes, week. Yes, exactly. Uh, you were talking about, oh, we're going to be we're in shorts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then here, here we go. Look at these Always numbers happens. out there. We should make you wear shorts. The announcer's curse. <laughs> <laughs> it's 33 right now in Lapeer. That temperature keeps dropping out there. Uh, in fact, everything north of 8 Mile is in the 30s. South of there, we're in the 40s. Most of what we're seeing is in the form of rain, but there is still a pocket of light snow uh, that we've been tracking basically on either side of I-69 and even in northern parts of Oakland County as well. Uh, it looks a little bit more intense here on Fort Live Radar than what's actually showing up. But if you start zooming in here, most of Lapeer County seeing the white stuff right now, especially up there in Columbiaville. Look at what we got in on storm pins. Uh, they said the caster plants are done now. I think that's probably a safe assumption. I uh, hope you don't have a steak on the grill out there, but uh, we've got plenty of the snowflakes continuing to fly and at least through probably the next few hours, we're going to continue watching those. And you see it's mainly going to be in those uh, parts of our north zone as we get through the next few hours. Once more moisture gets here and those temperatures will actually start to rise a little bit as we head towards morning, that should take care of the snowflakes and we'll go back to just plain old rain. So should not be any significant accumulation. It's enough to sit on some of those elevated surfaces as you saw up there on some of the uh, porch railings and such picnic tables. But once we get into tomorrow morning, it's just going to be scattered light showers. Those will eventually dry up. May see a couple sprinkles in our north zone tomorrow afternoon, and that is going to be just about it. We've got some warmer temperatures coming as we head towards the weekend, but let's look at rainfall because uh, this is going to be a significant amount for some people. There will be spots pick up an inch of rain between now and where we finally wrap this thing up uh, on Thursday morning. South zone, anything shaded and blue here, we're expecting an inch plus, maybe slightly less down here towards the state line, but uh, these numbers are going to be noticeable just about everywhere. West zone, more often than not, we're going to be close to that one inch mark and north of M59, even though we're mixing in a few snowflakes, total accumulation of rain, this is rain, I want to emphasize that, is going to be one inch plus there, uh, mainly north of 69. So temperature wise, as we get to tonight, this is what we're going to wake up to. I know we're colder than that right now, but we're moving up. So most of us will be in the low 40s by tomorrow morning. Not going a whole lot to, uh, of anywhere tomorrow with that 48 degree finish. Plus the winds come out, so it is going to be kind of a raw day. But notice that those numbers go up close to average Friday, 63 on Saturday and Halloween looking pretty good. In fact, we'll make a yeah. run at 70. That's good ish by Tuesday afternoon. And no rain to mess up costumes. Yeah, and like I hate when the kids have to put coats it's, over their costumes. I'm not going to jinx it, so I'm <laughs> just, 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 just going to cross my You've done enough. Your lips we'll right just now. Say, let's let's go. <laughs> okay, Doc. Well, Halloween is supposed to be scary fun, but for some children, it's just plain scary. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, the best way to ease your child's Halloween fears. All right, Frank, but first, two big fires today in southwest Detroit, and there are fears that they were no accident. That's next. Get every second. An investigation is underway to determine who caused two Detroit fires. 
As you can see here from the video, firefighters were on the scene this morning working to put out this fire that was in a vacant building. This is Michigan Avenue at Martin Road. They were also on the scene here, though, at Fort Street and Rosa Parks, and both of those fires uh, are being investigated, and both right now are termed as being suspicious. He's been a sheriff of Arizona's largest county for 23 years, become a national figure. He's now in some hot water. Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio is now officially been charged with contempt of court. According to a judge, Arpaio has intentionally violated an order to stop targeting Latinos during immigration sweeps. The sheriff is uh, currently seeking a seventh term in office. He will not be arrested nor required to enter a plea, but his trial on this charge is set to begin in December. Family and friends are gathering tonight to remember longtime Detroit free press columnist and sports writer Drew Sharp. Visitation is being held at Desmond Funeral Home on Woodward Avenue in Royal Oak and runs until 8 p.m. Sharp will be laid to rest tomorrow morning at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church on Adams Road and Bloomfield Hills. Services begin at 1030. New at 530. A deadly crime spree. This man on the run right now wanted for shooting two police officers and killing two family members. And there are new fears he's after more targets. Canceling Christmas. Consumers Energy pulls the plug on one Michigan community's holiday display because of one thing they won't let the city do. Hair, nails, makeup. This may just be the busiest salon in Detroit, but the women sitting in these chairs haven't been to one in months, even years. Why what's happening today is giving them a fresh start. The story on Local 4. It's dinner time. Live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News at 5.30 starts now. It may look like a routine trip to the salon, but it's so much more than that. How this special event is giving these women a true fresh start. Those women are all from local shelters, some of them victims of abuse, others who've just fallen on hard times. But today, these relatively 